Hello, we're Circle Waves. And we are live in limbo. You call me a liar. You call me so innocent. You lit the fire. You lit the fire burns. The fire burns inside us. Hi, I'm Shannon from Live in Limbo, and I am sitting here with Circle Waves for their show in Toronto tonight. How are you guys doing today? We're good. We're good. You're good. Uh, we're good. Yeah, we spent some time on the border. We spent like four hours on the border stuck, so we, we uh, missed Niagara Falls. Oh, no. So we're, we're pretty bummed about that. Okay, well, I'm from Niagara Falls. Okay. It's not that interesting. You really didn't miss much. I appreciate it. It's like rest. a waterfall. That's about it. And like lots of people around <laughs> this said I, waterfall. I think you're maybe downplaying a touch. Okay, it's like a really big waterfall. That's about it. <laughs> so how's the tour going thus far? It's been really good. We've been away for like three and a half weeks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've been away for like three and a half weeks and we were doing uh, support shows with Tudor Cinema Club mm-hmm. for pretty much all of it except for yesterday and today. Cool. Uh, and then this is our last show on the East Coast. It's just our thing. And then we go to a festival in California next week. The Ooh, Foo Fighters. Fun. It's good. It's like, feels feels like it's, we've been away a long time. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I spend two days away from home, and I'm like, hey, I'm ready for my bed. <laughs> it's like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how is uh, supporting Two Door Cinema Club? They're they're pretty big. It's pretty huge. They're all similar size to us, actually. You'd be surprised when you meet them. I actually have met them. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, how that was like a. Joke. Um, <laughs> they're very pleasant people. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just sort of quite humble, and uh, they've worked really hard to get where they are. So yeah. they're not like you know young sort of mm-hmm. kids who think they deserve everything so um it was it's been it was an amazing tour really sad it's finished actually it feels like it went really quickly mm-hmm. um we got to like play like 40 minute sets every night and then uh drink booze every night and watch <laughs> two door cinema club which is kind of my favorite night out anyway yeah so it's like doing that on repeat for three weeks we did that for three weeks every night yeah so it's cool it's amazing yeah i saw them last year and they're so good it's just like it felt like my childhood was like coming back to me. It was like the albums I listened to in high school. So yeah, they're pretty. Well, awesome. they were one of the reasons why we we sort of our first album is, has a lot to sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's in debt. It's in debt to their <laughs> sound a little bit. Yeah, they definitely influenced. Yes, yeah. that was what I was trying to say. Sorry, my brain. <laughs> my brain is not awake. Yes. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so in the UK, you guys are playing some like pretty big shows, um, and then here you're playing some more like modest shy, size shows. How do how do your shows differ? Like when you're playing in the UK versus you're playing here, are you bringing something different to it? Or I would say we try and do the same thing um, as when we're playing to two thousand people or a hundred people. It's sort of. Um, in my, in my head, I'm always playing to a hundred thousand people, so that, <laughs> so I always have the same stupid expression on my face. Yeah. Um, but I think the people whoever buys a ticket deserves the same show. No, it's in a good my in my mind, like if you yeah. pay fourteen dollars for a show, uh, and we and we play like we don't care, then that's you know who the fuck are we? We we don't you know yeah we don't do that. So I, we play the same. I agree. I agree. <laughs> no, I think that's a good philosophy to have. There's nothing worse than going to see a band. And like, even if it's like a moderate size show and you can just tell they're not into it and you're like, well, me as an audience member, why am I going to get into it if yeah, you're not, right? It's stupid. It's, it's the, You'll look back on your career and go, oh, maybe that's why we didn't get bigger. Mm-hmm. So we, we take every show like it's our last and sort of play play for whoever buys a ticket really that's a good philosophy um so you guys uh played glastonbury this summer and i know that is huge for literally anyone any band that's in the uk so kind of walk me through from the moment you found out to like when you stepped on that stage like what was going through your mind at that point let's reenact it joe you're playing glastonbury what you're playing glastonbury no (laughs) do you you not want to (laughs) okay (laughs) Uh, that, was, that, was a, that was a perfect reenactment. It, it was. It's cool. It's like we we've done it. A f- I've done it a few times, but this is like the stage that we played was um, was like uh, it's the other stage. It's like at any other festival, it'll be like a main, like the main stage. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's um, it's basically the main stage. But yeah, it's one of those things that uh, 
every time you do it, it's just another tick on the list. Played and, Glastonbury again. <laughs> yeah, but, the, but but like the, the crowd were amazing. It was the, it was our first um, first big festival show of the summer. Yeah, yeah. And it was the first time that we got to see uh, how the new album would work mm -hmm. to a festival crowd. Mm -hmm. And the answer is really well. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's always good. Uh, Kieran developed a good ability to make the crowd do whatever he wanted. <laughs> Getting them to do the pits. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do your laundry. Yeah. Throw your dirty laundry Another in the thing. cloud. Yeah. <laughs> of crowds. Um, so I actually kinda like watched a bit of the stream. Um and towards like the last song you have like an inflatable boat and then your drummer went into the crowd in this inflatable boat. Can I just ask like how and why that came about? He, <laughs> this is I think this is how it went. He said, Oi, I think I should go in the crowd on a boat. And then he called his brother who was coming to Glastonbury and said, could you get me a boat? <laughs> this is a good Colin impression. Yeah. And then his his brother, like, bless him, like, queued up, queued up to get into Glastonbury carrying a an inflatable dinghy you know and gave it to him. And then it was like, it was all like our crew. They, orchest they sort of orchestrated it. It was a security briefing. It was a lot less rock and roll than you imagine. <laughs> but I, like people, I was watching and people were trying to, like Knock get him, him out yeah. yeah yeah like and he i swear he was just like stamping on the river <laughs> like <laughs> people were like trying to push and he was definitely stamping back it was fun to watch though right i i yeah it's a fantastic show for me to mm -hmm. watch yeah i was watching it and i was just like at the end i was like did he just fall in the crowd like how long did it take him to get back to the stage <laughs> but then james blunt did it recently and he was like oh i'm in a dinghy and we were like fuck off james blunt <laughs> colin's already done it you copied us. You watched yeah. the Glastonbury set. How freaking yeah, dare you? Yeah, James. Yeah, we did Come it first. Out. <laughs> so let's talk a bit about your new album. So um, as someone who listens to music, whenever a new album comes out, there's always people who have their two cents that they throw in about it. Um, you make something too similar. Your All your songs sound the same. Mm. Um, you make something different. They miss your old sound. So it's like you can't really win. So when you were writing this new album... And obviously, it's so much different than your first album, which was so successful. Were you just like, we're going to do what we want? Or did you plan to do something different? Like, how did this come come about? Um, well, I think no matter what style we write in, it's still going to be pop music. Mm -hmm. So I was never fearful that people wouldn't like it. And I was, I maybe thought some of our fan base might sort of go, oh, I don't like this, it's a bit too mm -hmm. heavy. But I always knew that if they were going to leave, then there would always be some more people who would come in yeah um and all the bands that we've ever liked um have always moved on and changed and mm -hmm. bands who i grew up with like the maccabees and arcade fire and obviously like the beatles who come out every album slightly yeah. different and it develops and they mm -hmm. mature and the instrumentation changes and we we i think we were quite sort of uh fearless in our decisions and we didn't worry too much about it mm -hmm. um you know, Wake Up is about a million miles away from T-shirt weather. Yeah. So I guess maybe maybe it was a bad decision. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think it was a bad decision. Okay, good. I like it. It's good. I think it's good. Yeah. I mean, if you like uh, summery sort of surf music, listen to the first one. If you like rock and roll, listen to yeah. the second one. No, exactly. I think T-shirt weather has been on every single summer playlist I've ever looked at ever since like 2014. <laughs> so like... <laughs> It's a good mix up and like there's nothing wrong with mixing it up like some of my favorite albums of all time have been something that an artist took it their music in a different direction mm -hmm. like Ben Howard his first album was like super happy and then I forget where we were was like a whole nother world but it doesn't mean I like any album yeah. more or less right so it's it's good yeah I think and, and you are damned if you do damned if you don't sort yeah of thing so Either way, what we you know we have to do something. So. Yeah, you can't mention Mumford and Sons to a non-indie fan without them being like, every single song sounds the same, right? <laughs> so like, you literally can't win. But yeah. you know what? I think from what I've seen watching your live shows, your fans have well has it's been well received. Um, I haven't seen anything bad about it, so it definitely worked. Brilliant. <laughs> well, it's it's been more critically acclaimed than the first one, so we must have done something. Must right. have, and you just yeah. kind of went with it, and you can't think about too much what you're doing, right? Exactly. You just got to do it. Yeah. No, you can't imagine like Andy Warhol sitting there going, "Oh, I'm worried about what the critics think." <laughs> He's just, a, you know, all the great art is done without thinking and not worrying about what we, what people sort of exactly will well, think of it. That's the whole point of art, right? It's your interpretation of something. Exactly. So, yeah. um, so your one song, "Different Creatures," you said it's um, representative of the Syrian refugee crisis, 
And I've seen lately a lot of artists such as like Maddie Healy from the 1975 are becoming more increasingly political. Um, what is your opinion on artists being political? Do you think they should if you have the platform or you should keep it strictly to art? They should shut up and <laughs> keep their mouths shut. Um, no, I mean, we... I, if if it's a if it's a voice f- for good things, I, th- I think I think you should sp- you should speak it. If you if you sort of like trying to promote hatred, then no, don't talk about <laughs> it. But I mean, for us, we've with the with the Syrian refugee crisis and, and and immigration into Britain, we were talking about you know just innocent people trying to save their lives and stuff, mm-hmm. and and there's nothing you know. If why wouldn't you want to? There's like that's the only answer that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I think people should speak up if they if they believe in something. Yeah. Just yeah. because you have a you're in a band doesn't mean that you're you're not a person. Right? You're not a person yeah. with a, opinions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think like the, you sh- you shouldn't just because you have a platform doesn't mean you should you know give your opinion constantly. But I think that if you have something worth saying, then you should you mm-hmm. should definitely say it. Yeah. And I think as well like our our fan base are quite young and there's quite a shift in the UK at the moment with politics and mm-hmm. sort of the young becoming more engaged. And so I feel, we feel like it's something that not to like sort of be outwardly political in our music, but the good thing about social media and things like that is you can be political without, you know, writing every song being about your sort about of beliefs. Politics, yeah. And I think, yeah. I think different creatures, even though it's a political song, it's not, it's more of a humanist message in the sense that it's more about you know people's, yeah. people's lives as opposed to um policy yeah. even though the two things are inextricably linked yes and the thing about politics is there's always people on both ends of the spectrum and believe it or not even if it's about innocent people dying there's gonna be people that disagree with it so like even when i say i don't have a billion twitter followers but like if i can say something that impacts someone's life for good why not say it right but on the other end there's some celebrities that just like i feel like they just tweet things because they're expected to tweet them you know like here's my condolences i don't actually mean anything so i mean it goes in both ends right but yeah. you know do what you can That's do what, what you say. can be a good person <laughs> um so on a little light, lighter note here i always like to ask um you talk a lot about your music but who are you guys listening to right now Ooh, I haven't listened to any music in a while. Um, of tour, go for it. You go. I like that uh, Young and the Giant mm. record, mm-hmm. which I know is like super pop, but I'm just like a, I'm really into pop. <laughs> Can't help it. Uh, I just think the production's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Uh, I listened to Dark Side of the Moon last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was great. <laughs> it's a really good album. Turns out. No. Uh, the the no. critics were not wrong. No, uh, critically and the, acclaimed. And the 75 billion record that sold seemed to be justified. 75. Yeah, I guess so. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else. I could sift through my Spotify, but that would be terrible for people to watch. Just be like, hey, oh, I really no. like this song yeah. right now. Oh, the Beatles are good. Hey, they played Beatles during uh, yoga last night. Yeah, how did that go? It was good. And then some people were like, why does everything have to be political? Because they let it be. And I was like, okay, you're at yoga. I don't know why you're complaining about things. <laughs> wow. That sounds like really stressful yoga. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Political yoga. How could you be the sort of person who goes to and complain about let it be? That's amazing. Yeah. That's what I thought. I was like walking out. I was like, yeah, I really, feel good. That person really needs yoga in their life. Yeah, they clearly. Quite broken through that barrier. Yet. <laughs> They're a newcomer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's about it. Um, you guys have a great show tonight and uh, good luck. Cheers. Thank you. Nice one.